Howdy Connection Group Leaders, happy Thursday. You are sitting at the Lewis family table here at Fort Lewis. We just sat down for dinner, but we wanted to make a quick message to you to tell you we love you and we're so thankful for you. We hope you're having an excellent time with your family right now. Hopefully the Cowboys will win. Hopefully George will not eat our food off the table. <laughs> um, but we do, we love and appreciate y'all a lot and can't wait to see you on Sunday because it's hanging in the green. We're pretty excited about that. So happy Thanksgiving. Okay. All right, howdy again, Connection Group leaders. The Cowboys game is now over. George and I are just sitting here on the floor, and George and enjoying the Christmas tree. Merry Christmas, by the way. Um, excited about that. Uh, but I'm excited to talk to you about Acts chapter 9. Uh, a couple of things about this, really maybe three things about this passage I think are worth saying. You've heard me say this before. I'm going to say it again, though. This is a really familiar passage, but don't let the familiarity just automatically give you the response of, okay, we kind of know this, so we're just going to breeze through it because we're supposed to. We find increasingly in our church, either because there's new people amongst us, there's new believers amongst us, or folks that just maybe kind of heard it back in their day, maybe the same situation where we kind of heard that because I was supposed to know it, and they don't actually know the story. So go, go through the passage together. There's nothing good that can't happen as a result of you going through the details again. Uh, number two, I love how the gospel changes people. And really there's two sets of changes and really two groups of different people who change, but we as believers experience the same kind of change. And so uh, the first one's the the obvious one. The big one is, is, is Saul here. It says verse one uh, verbatim that Saul was breathing out murder against the church he hated Christians. And and it was out of his zeal. He really believed with all his heart he was serving God, right? And so um, you are uh, speaking blasphemies against God. Saul genuinely loved the Lord. And so out of his zeal, he was attacking people. And so God interceded on his behalf. Now, last week I mentioned to our youth leaders that one of our greatest apologetics uh, as believers is the fact that believers were willing to endure um, uh, not only criticism, but but actual persecution, right? And so Paul might even be a greater apologetic because he was an incredibly powerful person. Uh, he knew better than anybody uh, the results of him becoming a believer, and yet he did it anyway. That's how much Jesus changed his life, right? He was the persecutor. God changed his heart, and now immediately he is telling others, Hey, you need to follow Jesus too. Think about that. Just days before, I'm willing to kill you if you follow Jesus. And now I'm telling you, you need to follow Jesus. There is no good reason for him to do that unless Jesus is real. And unless Jesus is worth following. This is how the Lord can change our lives. This is how the Lord wants to change our lives. For us to be so uh, fervent in our belief that we're willing to endure anything, including giving up power, receiving criticism, and potentially even having to give up our lives for the sake of the gospel. That's an amazing thing. Incredible apologetic there. So that's the first change we see is how it, it changes um, just our, our willingness to endure things. Number two, it changes how we view other people. So here's all these believers. Ananias is the first one. All these believers that are running scared from Paul specifically. I'm sorry, I keep saying Paul, but Saul. Same dude. By the way, this is free information um, Paul didn't change his name because he became a believer. Paul is just his Greek name. He's Saul with amongst the Hebrews. He's Paul amongst the Greeks. Roll on with that. So whether I call him Paul or Saul, Saul same dude. Not, not because he's a believer now. Um, people are running scared from Saul uh, because of how he's treating them. But once he gets saved, and there was a little bit of caution there, understandably, they begin to treat him as a true brother. He's already guilty of taking the lives and imprisoning other brothers and sisters. But because he belongs to Jesus now, okay, he's on our team now. We're going to give him the full brotherhood. We're going to treat him completely with love and respect and even um, risk our own lives to protect his now because he's a member of the brotherhood. Man, this is what the gospel does. People who um, wronged us yesterday... Because what Jesus has done in our own lives, we are now able to forgive them and seek to not only just, yeah, I'm going to let that that slight go 
because of how you treated me. No, I'm actually going to forgive you and seek to bless and honor and protect you now because of what Christ has done for me. That's incredible. That's the way I want to be. This is what God's calling us all to. Is it easy? No. But it's what the gospel does in our lives. Man, this is certainly what Christmas is all about and certainly what Thanksgiving is about, but just really what the blood of Jesus is all about. That's how he changes us. I am thankful for the fact that he can and will and does change us in that way. And I want the Lord to do that in my own heart and mind more and more. Hope you do too. So again, happy Thanksgiving. Love you guys. Have a fantastic weekend. Can't wait to see you on Sunday. The students are going to be phenomenal, I promise. We really are excited just to not only make a presentation, but just to worship with you. So we'll see you then. Love you all.